Hi, and welcome to an intro to quantum mechanics. Uh, I'm going to start off this series by uh, motivating uh, quantum mechanics from a philosophical perspective. Uh, there's uh, a, a lot that, that uh, a lot of ways to approach quantum mechanics. There's, you can think about it from a purely mathematical approach. You can think about it from a, motivating it from experimental results. Like what, what were the things that were going on in the scientific community? which led people to realize that our world, our understanding of the world at the time was not sufficient. Um, and you can also approach it from a philosophical perspective. So I'm going to try to cover all of those areas, and, but in this particular video, and this is the very beginning video, it's really to motivate the philosophy behind quantum mechanics, to kind of set the framework. And I'm going to try to do it with as little math as possible in, in this video, in the next video or two. Um, however, uh, quantum mechanics ultimately, in order to really solve problems and compute things, we need to know math. So in this whole series, I'll, I'll let you know when we get there, but for understanding all of the quantum, there will be some stuff in the future where having some experience with some of the physics in, in that you, you might have seen in classical physics, uh, maybe even some of the electricity magnetism, and also um, uh, um, uh, knowing some differential equations um, will help. But as much as possible, I'm going to try to cover all those topics, and when we get to something that's new, like some differential equation, I'll point you to some other... Um, sources that you could you can use. Okay, so to get started, I also want to point out a, a really good book, and th this is the book that I use to best understand quantum mechanics. There's lots of books out there, a lot of sources also in Wikipedia, and I you know, encourage you to use all these things. But if there's really one book I had to recommend, it would be David Griffith's book on quantum mechanics. And let me just show it to you. It's, uh, it's this book here you can find it on Amazon. So I'm going to be following a lot of the content in there and solving a lot of problems from that book in these in this series. Okay, so um, okay, so now now let's get started. So um, the thing I'd like to to emphasize is what you might have been accustomed to be to doing in 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 physics in the in in, in that you've done so far, and that is in the classical world. Um, that's supposed to be an L connected to there, so I, I could actually erase it. Ah, forget it. I won't bother. But it's just it's classical, and then let's say quantum. So in the classical world, you have a ball that you throw up in the air. You have um, the Earth going around the Sun, or the Moon going around the Earth, and together they go around the Sun. All these different kind of classical objects and what your objective is is to understand the bodies of motion I understand how these how these objects move in time so you might know initially oh I throw a ball up in the air and I throw the ball up with some initial velocity and if I plotted it over time it might look something like that so this is time over here and then this is, uh, let's say, the, the, the position y above the ground. Um, so, so given some initial condition um, and given some e e force acting on the object, we can determine exactly where the ball is going to be at any point in time. So that's, um, that's really what you do in, quantum, in, in classical physics. And you might get more complex. You might say, oh, well, we have... An elect, you know, maybe maybe a charged ball, or uh, maybe it's in a, some something moving in a magnetic field. But effectively, you're taking some objects, putting some initial conditions on it, maybe some boundary conditions, and your objective is to solve, find out how does the system evolve over time. So that's how we approach the the classical world. The quantum world is is very different. Um, in the quantum world, it turns out that you you don't necessarily you're not your objective is to well ultimately the objective of all of all scientific approaches to explain reality like why do experimental results um, what how can we explain experimental results and so quantum mechanics was created in order to explain those results but from a philosophical perspective it turned out that in order for quantum mechanics to really work we can't do what we do in classic, the classical world. We instead 
we have to deal with uh, probabilities. And the objective in quantum mechanics is to figure out where something is likely to be. So that, that's really um, kind of profound. It's, it turns out that it's, it's non-deterministic. So that, that's like deterministic. Okay, that's like one of the biggest kind of um, like, like revolutions um, in in the um, in uh, in science um, at the turn of the uh, 20th century. Um, that 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 there was this new theory created, or actually early in the 20th century, this new theory was created, which turned out to not precisely predict future events that we were used to doing when we studied. Um, classical physics, and that, that was kind of revolutionary. Um, and so w what you end up doing is you end up trying to deal with um, what's known as the wave function. And I'm just going to introduce this, this symbol psi, and it's spelled P-S-I. Okay, psi is what you will end up solving in, in, in quantum mechanics. It's like this it's the the it tell it's related to the probability of finding um, your quantum mechanical object um, in a certain point in space and time. Uh, in in classical physics, you actually solve like the equation f equals m a, and you might solve that in multiple dimensions. And but in just one dimension, you end up solving like y of time equals so oh, the uh, maybe, maybe you've just dropped it from a cliff, so it's like negative one half uh, g acceleration due to gravity t squared. So just falling, it's just sort of falling in time, and eventually, you know, there's going to be a point where it hits the ground. So you know, this is only valid up to a certain amount of time. Um, but so in, in the in the quantum world, though, you 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 can't really solve the exact position as a function of time. Instead, you can solve this wave function, psi, as a function of time and space. And what it dealt, tells you is the probability. Maybe it's looking like that. And so this is the probability. In fact, the probability is related to psi by you taking the, the, the um, square of the, um, of the wave function. And so maybe this is some point a at some point, at some point in time. And the probability that your quantum mechanical object is at that point is is related to this this um, squared um, square of this of, of this wave function. So um, I'd like to pause there before we get more more deeply into um, uh, pro trying to solve problems um, in quantum mechanics and instead focus on what does this mean? What are the implications? And so one of the kind of profound questions you might ask is, well, let's suppose I end up observing an object to be at a position A. Um, you know, I, I, make, I, I, I have my quantum mechanical system, and then I go and measure the object, and I find that it's, like, it's located at A. You might ask the question, well, where was the object before I measured it? And that's actually a really important and very profound a very very fundamental question that you might ask. It turns out that there's some really interesting answers that, that quantum mechanics has about that. And that's what's going to be the topic of the next video. Okay? So main points I want to stress here are when you approach quantum mechanics, you, you're instead of trying to approach it from a purely deterministic perspective, you're, you're instead dealing with a lot of probabilities. You're, you're trying to compute the likelihood of finding an object at a point in space and time. And uh, that has profound implications for, for a lot of things. And we'll, we'll cover that as, in the future videos. Okay, so um, move on to the next video.